The Raven. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as if someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly had I sought to borrow, from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, this it is, and nothing more." Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping when so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore? This I whispered, and the echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what their is and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when with many a flirt and flutter in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady perched above my chamber door, perched upon the bust of Pallas just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the continents it wore. Though thy crest are shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly, grim, and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shores. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly. Though its answer little meaning, little relevance it bore. For we can't help but agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Bird or beast upon the sculpted bust above his chamber door. With such a name as nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on the placid bus spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he muttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered. Other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. And then the bird said, nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster, till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never, nevermore.
But the raven, still beguiling all my fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled the cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then, upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to thinking, fancy unto fancy, linking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining the lamplight gloated o'er, she shall press <sighs> nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfume from some unseen censer swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee. By these angels he has sent thee. Respite, respite and nepenthe from these memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh, quaff this kind nepenthe and forget this lost Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempest sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted in this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me, truly I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden, it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp, O oh, rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of pardon, bird or fiend, I shrieked upstarting. Get thee back into the tempest and the nice Plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie that soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from out my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door and his eyes have all the seemings of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. The backstory for this demon is he was once a member of the clergy named Revan Moreau. After the church and his congregation found out that he was in love with one of the local pagans, he was forced to watch as she was executed in the cleansing fires at the stake. In the weeks and months, he was driven mad by sorrow for his lost love. This madness culminated in him locking the church and setting the whole thing ablaze with his congregation and him inside. Now the demon of endless sorrow of a love lost, he collects souls kindred to his own in his censer. I thought this was a fun backstory to go with him and it really goes with kind of the raven from the poem. Visiting the narrator who just can't let go of Lenore. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm super proud of him. I'm really proud of him, he came out so good. I hope you liked this episode, I know it was a little bit different but Halloween is my favorite season, and I figured it'd be fun to do something a little different. This is like my first attempt at making like a realistic looking little something. So I'm really, really happy with how this came out. I'm very happy with it. I want to give a special shout out to the Ace of Clay, actually. I'll leave his link in the description below. He's a channel here on YouTube. And honestly, I binged his tutorials to learn how to do this in the first place. So definitely go check him out if you're interested in learning some of this. Speaking of shoutouts, I wanted to say thank you to our newest high tier Patreon members. Zek Torres, Jeremy Vinton, Matthew McGowan, thank you so much. If it wasn't for people like you, I wouldn't be able to do all this cool stuff, so I really appreciate you. And you are now on the list of these fine people who help make this show run. If any of you would like to help support this channel, link in the description to my Patreon below. Or you can just, you know, like and share and all that good stuff. It really means a lot to me. 
Speaking of which, if you did like this episode, why don't you give me some of that like it, love, and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. In the meantime, though, enjoy this spooky time of year, and as always, keep leveling up, you. Thank you for staying to the end screen here. Now, my little guy here is hungry for souls, but the one thing that keeps him from stealing your soul is by clicking on one of these other videos down here below. Little known fact, as long as you're watching my videos, your soul can't be stolen. That's science. That's how it works. Who's hungry for souls? You're hungry for souls. Yes.